Welcome to Zion's Worship for the fourth Sunday of Lent, March 22nd, 2020. I welcome you in as we have to uh, be doing our, our services uh, remotely. So please, uh, please partake of the service with me and, and pray with me and read with me as we go along. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Bend your ears to our prayers, Lord Christ, and be among us. By your gracious life and death for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts and our lives. Anoint us with your Spirit, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'd like to share with you the uh, psalm for today. It's a, it's a very familiar psalm for us, Psalm 23. And uh, you can recite it along with me as, as we go through this, if you want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Amen. Our gospel lesson for today is a story from John, the ninth chapter, beginning with the first verse. In this story, Jesus heals a man born blind, provoking a hostile reaction that he regards as spiritual blindness to the things of God. So as, as we're reading the story today, it's quite long, so feel free to sit down if you want and get comfortable. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go and wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. And then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is not this the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes. And then he said to me, Go and wash in the pool of Siloam. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now, it was a Sabbath day when Jesus had made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes. Then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? They were divided. So they said again to the blind man, 
What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son who was born blind? How then does he see? His parents answered, we know that he is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for a second time, they called the man who had been blind and they asked him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? And then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, for, but for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, you were born entirely in sin, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking to you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, surely not we are blind, are we? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. The Gospel of our Lord. I would like to uh, ask parents out there to uh, take out your Spark Bible after this is all through and turn to page 433 where you can get the Pool of Siloam story and read it to your children during this time. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we gather this morning, in many different places, we ask for your presence to be with us. Lead us and guide us through this time. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I have a friend who I should probably hesitate to call an old friend because he's two years younger than me, but we've been close friends since about junior high. He's someone I've spent a lot of time with, working on old cars that we had, bike riding, and just hanging out. 
We've both led busy lives and raised our kids. Our wives have gotten to be good friends. We're both grandparents. We don't get together as much as we'd like, but when we do, it's like no time has passed. We feel just as comfortable around each other now as we always did. I guess with the passage of time, we could call ourselves old friends. Today our psalm comes to us as an old friend. The 23rd Psalm is probably one of the first psalms that we've ever heard. It's only six verses long, so it's short, and it's easy to memorize. Many of us have memorized this psalm, whether we've tried to do it or not, and we can recite it beautifully. This old friend carries us back into a different time, a bygone world, a world of sheep, and shepherds. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, it says. I can't remember a time when I didn't know this psalm. Can you? It's a portion of scripture that we seem to fall back on when we can't think of another psalm or another passage of scripture. We can remember Psalm 23. In 35 years of ministry, this is the go-to psalm and scripture for funerals. When I ask a family about what scriptures they'd like at a loved one's funeral, invariably, this one comes up. We read it. We hear it. We recite it. It's part of our life of faith. Maybe it's because at the end of life, This psalm dares to speak about the end, the darkest valley. It names the darkest valley as a place where the Good Shepherd is with us. Psalm 23 speaks a calm, reassuring message to us in the midst of a very dark, difficult time for all of us. This past week has been a very difficult week. We have had to cancel almost everything here at church. All those things that are important to us are on hold. We will meet again to worship the Lord, but when? When will our normal routines return? When will the fears subside, fears of the crowd, fears of people gathering who may or may not be carriers of COVID-19? Will our jobs and the services that were used to be available once we come to the end of this? Will our savings and retirement accounts in the stock market rebound? Will we, or the ones that we love, walk that path through the darkest valley of the shadow of death? As I stand here today in this empty sanctuary, a place that is normally filled with people on a Sunday morning, it strikes me that this is the place where we come to encounter our friends, old friends and new friends. But for now, we meet via the electronic media to keep one another, our friends, safe. Verse 6 states, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. One of the commentators that I read states, the Hebrew word for follow can be translated as pursue. This would render, render the verse, Surely goodness and mercy shall pursue me all the days of my life. This opens up a new avenue of what to deal with, with that old friend of ours. To have a good shepherd that pursues us with goodness and mercy is different from simply following us. It's like when your dog, the beloved family pet, wanders off. You call and call, and yet he doesn't come. 
So you get in your car and you drive up and down the road, looking and calling out. You phone your neighbors and ask them to keep an eye out for him. And finally, you see your dog running across a field. You get out of the car frantically calling after him, and then you start to run after him to get his attention so that he comes back to you. That's the difference between following and pursuing. We have a good shepherd who leaves the 99 and goes in search of the one lost sheep until he finds it. He pursues us as well. This old friend pursues us relentlessly, and he is the one who brings us the peace and calm of his presence. He leads us beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. While we hunker down as a nation or as individuals, this good shepherd pursues us. He is always with us. Those on the front lines of the struggle, the nurses, the doctors, the healthcare workers, paramedics, police officers, grocers, school teachers and staff, all are pursued by this good shepherd. Those who are hunkered down at home are truly not alone, for he pursues us wherever we might be staying. He brings comfort, peace, strength, and a restoration of spirit to all. We wander off, headed down some crooked path, and we forget our way, our common sense, and we do something we shouldn't do, and that good shepherd pursues us. This coming week, as you deal with your new normal, or as you continue on in a strange and frightening reality, reflect on this psalm. Take this old friend with you wherever you go at home or at work, helping a neighbor, bringing food to a shut-in, calling a friend to keep in touch. Recite the psalm. Think about it. Think about what it means to have a good shepherd who pursues us and never quits. Let yourself fall into the arms of a Savior who loves you beyond all measure. Walking through that darkest valley with uncertainty and danger around us, remind yourselves what this psalm says about our Good Shepherd. Memorize it if you haven't already done so. Let it sink deep into your heart and into your mind. And if you want, substitute the my with your name. The Lord is Jim's shepherd. Jim shall not want. Connect with others, family and friends, as is appropriate, as is prudent and is safe. But remember through it all, the Good Shepherd is pursuing you, and he is your comfort and strength, your green pasture beside the still waters. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, lead us through the valleys, the places of darkness and death. Guide us through this difficult time as we deal with new and frightening realities in our lives. Bring safety, patience, and health, comfort, and a return to good health. As we keep our distances from one another physically, keep us together spiritually that we will always be looking out for one another. Pursue all who are lost, a gentle shepherd. Pursue all who long for mercy, forgiveness, and your grace. Pursue all those who do not know you or do not know your love, for you are the one who searches and never gives up. We pray for all who are in ill health or in need of your healing touch, 
You can name them in your hearts at this time. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Bring comfort as you meet their needs. We ask all these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please pray with me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.